This is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Rampage. This is from September 10th, 2021. Um, uh, some people I've seen knock the sort of order in which they put things. Man, if you haven't gotten that part of AEW's mandate, at least currently, is to undo um, the perceived wrongs of the WWE, um, then you don't know what you've been watching. <laughs> and part of that is honoring hometown people instead of uh, degrading them. So yes, Brian Pillman Jr. wrestled in the main event against Max Caster, um, really ostensibly is giving a backdrop for Moxley being able to save him and the two of them be being able to have their Cincinnati boy hero moments. And I had no problem with it. I thought it worked very effectively. In fact, I think opening... Um, with Andrade and Pac was the great move. Um, Andrade had his best match to date um, in AEW, but more than that, since he's left, um, the match with Kenny Omega in Mexico wasn't very good, but this was very good. Um, the finish was what it was against, uh, again, AEW, which tends to do tropes again and again and again and tonight was referees look dumb night um, which I did not appreciate but the match itself was fantastic um, Chavo Guerrero interfering um, Andrade got to steal the win but then Andrade seemed to appear like wait did you help me win that and then uh, attacks Guerrero and left some leaves him laying Lucha Brothers super kicks him throw through them into Pac for the brutalizer um, as uh, Andrade watched from the stage. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting, interesting. Rebel, Jamie Hayter, and Britt Baker, they come to the ring first, and then Chris Statlander, Riho, and Ruby Soho. This showed me that Ruby Soho has been waiting to be the alpha female star baby face for a long time because she had all the beats down from her spots in the ring to how she made sure she gathered everybody afterwards so they could have their moment. I loved it. I think Riho has been looking increasingly good um, in the ring, just sharper, sharper work that actually looked dominant. And Hater made up for what I thought was a very clunky and awkward performance against uh, Ruby Soho. So this match definitely worked. Um, the spot where Baker was down and Riho was going to do the double stop from the top rope and Rebel covered her body and took the hit. I thought it was it's one of those great things that they can use later on and firmly establishes who all of these people are. I thought it was just really effective. And then finally, at uh, Brian Pillman Jr. against Max Caster. In a good match for both of them, Caster, as he uh, has a good rap that mostly is just making fun of Cincinnati. Um, and so it goes. At the end of it, he wins. It was strange that Griff Garrison wasn't there and Julia Hart wasn't there. Um, again, I would have loved to see more reasoning behind that. I mean, I get it from a from a performance standpoint. That way Moxley comes to save him and all this kind of stuff. And Pillman's win feels very earned and that kind of thing. Um but again, an explanation on why they wouldn't have been there would seem to be in order. N not a huge thing, but it's these small things that add up to big things later on. But a good episode of Rampage to close out um, what was a, a really maybe one of the best wrestling weeks we've had overall. Only Raw fell on its ass which at this point is kind of expected. And Impact wasn't the sharpest, though it did a good job of setting up next week's um, show, which looks to be a great one. But Dynamite, Gangbusters, second highest number they've ever gotten, and all the rest of that. You can listen to that report for more. And the best SmackDown they've had in um, memory, honestly. Um, and at Madison Square Garden, and then a really good rampage where Andrade now feels like he's much more in line of what he's supposed, where he's supposed to be, and honoring uh, Cincinnati and giving the hometown heroes a little rub. It's nicely done.